Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Every day you are this blind man. Every day when you open your eyes and look at the sinner staring back at you in the mirror. You are Bartimaeus, as Mark's Gospel names him. You are this blind man, unable to see the face of God. Every day, you are this blind man crying out for mercy. And every day, God gives that mercy to you. Sin takes the sight out of our eyes. Sin stops us from seeing God, from knowing who He is. Why are there so many religions in this world? Why do so many people follow gods who so coincidentally happen to bless precisely the sins that those people commit? Why is this? Because our sin has made us blind to God. So the sinful Greek man sat on the side of the road, blinded by his sin, begging for whatever mercy he could find. And because he could not see, he created in his mind gods that were just like him. Gods like Zeus and Ares, God whose mercy could be found only through sacrifices and warfare. The Greek man blindly reached out and tried to touch the face of a God who wasn't real, a face that had been made in that man's own image. And because of this, his eyes remained closed. And so did the eyes of everyone else. The Muslim reached out to a God whose mercy could only be found in perfect obedience, the Hindu reached out to a God whose mercy could only be found in enlightenment, in searching for the divine nature that hides within all of us. The atheist reached out for the God whose mercy could be found by making man into God himself. They all searched in their blindness, and none of them found mercy from the gods they created. And things were no different for all of us in our sin, We tried to create a God we thought might be merciful to us, a God who might love us. Those of us who struggled with anger created a God who loved our zeal and our courage, hoping that this God would receive us as his own. Those of us who struggled with self-righteousness created a God who loved our desire to be pure and upright people, a God who salivated over all of the good works and obedience that we'd offered him hoping that he would call us his children. When we were lustful, we created a God who called our perversions love and gave us uh, the word and could not... uh, uh, When we were lustful, we created a God who called our perversions love and gave us eternal life as a reward for our heartfelt sacrifice. When we were spiritually lazy, when we were despisers of the word and could not be bothered to care to let God actually tell us who he was, In this state, we created a God we hoped would praise us for our open-mindedness. We searched for mercy, for eternal life, for hope in the false gods we created in our own spiritual blindness. But we found none of these things. There we were, blind, condemned, and dead. But then Jesus walked past Bartimaeus, that blind beggar sitting outside on the road to Jericho. Jesus walked past Bartimaeus, and Bartimaeus knew that something was going on, so Bartimaeus cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Bartimaeus asked Jesus to restore his sight, to let him look on the face of the son of David, the Messiah. Bartimaeus asked Jesus to show him the face of God himself, and Jesus did. He opened that blind man's eyes to see that all of God's mercy could be found in the face of this one called Jesus of Nazareth. Christ opened that blind man's eyes to see that the image of eternal life was found in the son of David. Not merely found in the son of David, but found in the son of David where he was heading. Found in the son of David being nailed to a cross, Jesus, just as Christ predicted he would be earlier in our gospel text for this morning. As Jesus stopped and opened the eyes of Bartimaeus, He showed this once blind man what the love of God looked like. Showed him that the love of God was found in the hatred of men directed at God's own Son. And when Jesus opened our eyes, that's precisely what he showed us. When we were sitting by the side of that road crying out for mercy, 
Jesus came to us and healed us. He came to us and opened our eyes by giving us His Word, by preaching it to us, by calling us to the faith in the waters of baptism. Jesus took away our blindness and He showed us what the face of God truly looks like. And the face of God looks like this. The face of God looks like the blood-covered, spit-covered face of Jesus Christ. The mercy of God looks like this. It looks like God being unmerciful to His Son, allowing men to pierce Christ's hands and His feet to a tree, allowing the chief priest to put His own Son to death so that death could have no power over us. And the love of God looks like this. It looks like men, women, and children tossing hatred at Christ, sneering at Him, cursing Him as He hangs upon that cross and yet forgives all their sins, takes away all their idolatry and their blindness, makes their anger and their lust and their spiritual laziness no more. As the Apostle Paul told us in our epistle text for this morning, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not ir irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. This is love, and there is no greater image, no, no, greater, er, no greater manifestation of this godly love than what we find at the cross of Jesus Christ. As his own people despise him and call out for his death, Jesus is patient and kind. His heart isn't filled with pride or anger. Even though his flesh is being torn apart, Jesus doesn't insist on his own way. He's not filled with resentment, but instead prays that God would forgive us, that he would not hold this sin against us. Even when we, even when you and I, took the life out of his body through our hatred and our sins, Christ bore it all. He kept the faith, kept his hope. He endured all the suffering and scorn, endured it to the point of death because He loved you, because He wanted to show you mercy, and because He wanted to open your eyes and let you see that in three days' time, He would rise from the dead and give you eternal life, the same eternal life that would then be glowing forth from His own resurrected face. So Christ has opened your eyes. And even though you close them again every day in your sin, every day, Christ is putting your retinas back to work through the power of His mercy and His healing, His love. You are baptized. And because of that baptism, every day when you wake up from your sleep in the blindness of sin, Jesus sends His word to you and opens your eyes to see that the one who was crucified for you still gives you His blood. Every day when you look in the mirror and see nothing but the face of a sinner staring back at you, every day Jesus takes the same hands that baptized you and He peels that filth off of your corneas and shows you that your face is no longer the face of a sinner. It's the face of a saint. The face of Christ's very own brother, the face of God's own child as we teach our children to sing. And every moment of your life when your sins leave you blinded on the side of the road, Christ gives you the right to call out to him. To call out with the words, we, words like this that we sing in the Kyrie. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. In every moment of your blindness, Jesus gives you those words to speak. 
and he will always answer that cry for healing with his forgiving word. Jesus will always restore your sight. He will always show you his once dead but now living face. No matter how great your sins, because he died and rose again for you, because he baptized you in the triune name, because he loves you, Jesus will always take away your blindness. He will always show you that all your sins are gone and that you are now free to forever place your freshly restored eyeballs on his salvation. Amen.